Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. Today we're going to be looking at the Mercedes E Sprinter. So let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by EasyGo, Ireland's largest EV charging network. With their fleet management solution, employees can charge their cars and vans at home, at work, on the public charging network, where there are more than 1,200 charge points. With the EasyGo fleet solution, a fleet manager can ensure vehicles are charged on a night rate electricity and the fleet drivers can travel across Ireland and access the public charging network. Just like with fuel cards, fleet managers can now manage all electric charging costs in a single monthly bill. Starting at the front, you won't know any difference between this and the regular Sprinter van. The only way that you're going to know that it's an electric, obviously the sign rating is going to be on the van that you have, is with the front charging flap. So if it is uh, charging, you'll know that it's an electric van. This is AC and DC, and we'll run through the different um, charging capabilities once we're out on the road. But otherwise, front is the exact same, even has the grill, so uh, even though it doesn't need it, and you've got your steps for cleaning your windscreen up there as well. But otherwise, it's the exact same. Let's have a look around the side. Down along the side, you're going to have your electric with your electric blue E, and that will be a signifier. Otherwise, it's the exact same wing mirrors, etc., and everything else. Your fuel filler cap would normally have gone in there, and massive sliding door all the way back. Um, you've got your climb handle up here, your grab handle to get up. This van is 70 millimeters taller than the regular Sprinter, and that's just because of that battery pack in underneath. So that also makes sure that the capacity is the exact same as the normal van. So it's 11 cubic meters, but it is that nearly three inches taller. The battery pack underneath has three skins, a plastic outer skin, a hard cell, and then a roll bar underneath that as well, just to protect it. Um, and this is rated now for 3.5 tons. So the van itself is 2.5. So you get about 1,045 kgs worth of a load capacity. You can't tone it. Uh, and in Ireland, you only have that mid-body high roof spec. Um, in the United Kingdom, you have a, a, a higher battery spec, and that spec will be potentially coming to Ireland as well. Uh, this one has been, um, the importers here in Ireland have fitted this out with uh, ply lining. You have your two lights, you've got your tie-off points, two at the front bottom bulkhead, two along, and sorry, six, and then two at the back, so eight along the floor itself. Um, really, really good, great size and the actual side of the van itself has a uh, great capability of being sign written. Uh, you've got your three reflectors along the side as well. So what we'll do is we'll turn the van around and have a look in the back doors then as well. On the back of the E-Sprinter you'll only know the difference with regards to it being a blue E, uh, otherwise you've got that high level brake light handle on the right hand side and you have 90 degrees or 180 degree doors uh, and on the right hand side We've got that handle there as well. Step up. You don't have a step on the side of the door because uh, of that battery pack underneath. Some of the combustion engine models have that pop-out step, but otherwise you've got great height here. I'm 187 centimeters, six foot three. Uh, and as I said, you've got 11 cubic uh, meters worth of storage. You have uh, your spare wheel on the side there. And as I mentioned, this one already has the, the lining on it. You've got one. some details here from the mercedes.ie website. You have the option of the different battery types and you've got your length, your width, uh, all the different dimensions there on screen. You can pause it and have a look around uh, to make sure it fits your requirements. And then you also have the width of the loading bay, the length of the loading bay, the height, etc., etc., and the uh, cubic capacity. So um, lots of details there uh, just in case you do need it. Inside in the Mercedes E Sprinter is a nice, uh, nice fitted out van. As always, we'll start from the door and work our way over. So you have electric windows and you have electrically adjusted wing mirrors as well as standard. You have a heated driver's seat, which always helps with conserving battery. Uh, so heat the seat rather than the whole cabin, but you have a steel bulkhead yeah, in here as well. And you have your center locking on the door. Good big door bins and the seat is uh, adjusted um, height wise. Also, you have your front for, uh, for tie support, and you also have um, a couple of different uh, options, up, down, left, right, anyway. It is a manual handbrake. You have over here, you have your um, lights, very similar switch gear to the Mercedes EQA, 
which is my last Mercedes review, uh, and you have your front, rear fog lights and then the level of the light. The actual vents that you have are the same click and they were silver in the EQA, so it's lovely to see them coming across to the commercial van. Steering wheel is plain enough. Uh, I'm not sure if this is can be specced down the line with a different steering wheel, but there is room here for some buttons, but there are not. So you've got the paddles, which would be to do with gears if it was a combustion engine. But obviously on the electric, it's, uh, this one has got four stages of regenerative braking. And then behind that then, on the right-hand side, you've got your reverse neutral drive and park. And on the left-hand side, it's very similar to the EQA. You have your lights, your wipers, your indicators. Behind that then, you've got a very simple cluster, but one that's all you need. You've got your speedometer. You've got your, whether you're taking, uh, whether you're in charge, economy, or boost mode, as in percentage of power that you're currently utilizing. And then um, press the brake, press the start button, and in the middle then you've got whether the door is open, what mode, uh, whether you're in drive, park, neutral, the range left, uh, and anything else that's happening within the vehicle itself. So yeah, good, clear. Underneath yeah. the start, on the uh, above my left knee, you have the start stop button and you've got the drive modes underneath that as well. With the drive modes, it starts off in economy, then you can go up to comfort, which gives you more uh, throttle. And then if you press it again, then it goes to Eco Plus. So there's three, Eco Plus, Eco and Comfort, and it's default in the uh, Eco mode. The WLTP on this is 170, but the real world range is about 120 kilometers. I have talked to people that have gotten around about 140, 150. Short urban runs, perfect for. I was even talking to somebody that had gotten 190 out of it now. A lot of slip streaming and downhill and wind behind, all that good stuff. But definitely it is to do with how you drive it. So there's a lot of, um, it's a small battery comparative to a lot of things, but for urban delivery routes and urban based driving, absolutely perfect. Uh, above that then you've got a lot of cubby holes and document holder storage areas. Um, you have two cup holders in front of the driver and then in front of the passenger two cup holders over there and then you have more documents you've got a 12 volt and a usb type c um moving and then underneath to the um infotainment area i suppose you'd call it you've got your two vents you've got your dab radio with usb type c as well and you've got a slot underneath then if you want to put your phone in there you've got a couple of more cubby holes air conditioning is not standard on this so this spec when it's coming into the irish market they're always looking to see what they need what they don't need so they didn't put in air conditioning you have your heated seat uh, and if it's warm just the couple of days that you need it make sure that you put down the window you've got your temperature on the left and you've got your speed of the fan on the right you've got where your uh, whether you want your feet warmed uh, hazard lights and then defog and ma max then you've got another four cup holders here two large and two small either side so in total there's eight cup holders and six of them will take the ev review ireland uh, coffee thermal cup um, armrest on this seat as well so the seats are comfortable driving position is good it is basic but basic in a good way with regards to it has enough of exactly what you need it to be um good big size of um sun visors and you've got this uh comfort well, i think they call it a kind of a comfort spec uh central unit so you have your um service button so press that and then you'll if something happens and and, you, and then you also have your sos button um if there's if there's a real problem uh, then you've got your reading lights etc and uh, you also have your sunglass holder you can get a shelf spec'd out for this uh, but it's not on this model so this model is coming in at uh, excluding vat 52,000 euros uh, and there are some vrts to come on and go off that but that's in around the price that you'd be going for um let's take it out on the road Oh, before we take it out the road, you have your um, central storage area. So you pop up the front of the seat and then tip it forward. And that's where you can put your cables and anything else you need. So then you just slot it down. Otherwise, there's not much else to talk about in here. As I said, let's take it out the road. If you think this van may be for you or your business, you can contact EasyGo and get your fleet driver set up on an EFU card by clicking the link on the screen or in the description. What's it like driving the Mercedes E Sprinter? It has a 85 kilowatt motor, putting out about 114 brake horsepower, about 300 newton meters of torque. So yeah, it's sprightly. Because it starts off in eco mode, if you do want that torquiness, you have to make sure that you go into comfort mode and the drive mode. And it also starts off with the highest level of regen. 
So just be careful as to what setting it's on to make sure that you get the most out of it. It's a 41 kilowatt hour battery and 35 kilowatts of that is usable. Um, Kingdom, it comes with two battery packs. It's a 50 odd kilowatt hour, so the range does increase in it. WLTP, as I mentioned, is 170, but you're getting between 100 and around the 120 mark. And if you're uh, light on the foot, you will um, get about 150. I know a couple of delivery drivers that get about 150 kilometers out of it. So it is for urban routes. It is for predefined routes. It, uh, it's not for everybody. It can't tow. It can take 1,045 kgs in the back. The regular Sprinter is 25 years old this year. Uh, and the Sprinter comes in three different lengths, short, medium, and long. Uh, and this is the medium length. And this is the only version at the moment that you can get the e-Sprinter in. So it's medium length and it is high roof. So they've worked out this is the sweet spot for all of those last mile uh, courier logistics companies, predefined routes, urban driving, because uh, 120 kilometers, you're not going to be going from Belmullet to Athlone. But yeah, really nice place to, and do you know what's great about driving an electric van is the lack of movement on your left leg. You're not clutching, unless it's an automatic, don't get me wrong, but you're not clutching. It's a lovely smooth, um, lovely smooth takeoff, torquey enough. And this is in the, in the eco mode. If you wanted it in comfort mode, it'd be even torquier. So yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the review. You can leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think of electric vans and even the Mercedes E Sprinter. I've also set up a Patreon and a PayPal if you want to support the channel financially. This is a passion project for me. Charging the Mercedes E Sprinter on AC, it is a 7.2 kilowatt. So it takes about six hours because of that smaller battery. And then DC, it's a funny one. It is, the standard setting is, it can take 20 kilowatt DC. No, so if you were uh, if you're pulling up to a, a DC charger and you saw one of these fellas charging, it'd take a while for that. But it can take up to uh, you can fit it so that it can take up to eighty kilowatts on DC. But that'd be for a splash and dash if you were getting a bite to eat, bite to eat, etc. Um, and the spec that it tells you uh, it takes seventy minutes to go from ten percent to eighty percent. Um, so definitely by putting that 80 kilowatt into it, you can do that in about 30 minutes, which isn't, which is around about the time that you'd, you'd want for it. Today's video was sponsored by EasyGo, who are now offering e-fleet services to include home, workplace and public charging network, as well as fleet managers oversight of all costs and bills. For more info or to submit a quote, click the link on the screen or in the description. That's my review of the Mercedes E Sprinter. Really good van. Obviously the range is short price is high but that's what you're going to get at the moment for electric vans of this size um, great to see them on the road huge fleet of them coming into ireland in the near future uh, when i was picking this up they were there in the yard but i can't say much more about that um, but it just shows that the three-pointed star has that build quality has that reliability has that brand behind it as well there are other vans in the marketplace as well you will see the Ma uh, Renault master in the playlist you'll also see the maxis e deliver 9 so there's lots of stuff out there hopefully you're enjoying the review if you can leave a like on the um, video leave a comment below and let me know what you think of electric vans and remember if you think an ev is for you leave it to me and i'll review thanks for watching <laughs>